Okay, so let's take a look at how to do question number 10, where we're asked to find uh, or calculate the sample size necessary to estimate a population mean. So what we're looking at doing is we're trying to find our the variable n, which is what we call our sampling size in our formula. And it's essentially this type of a question here. If you're given a, um, you're given a, there's some population mean uh, which we, we'll call that mu, right? And we want to be able to estimate the error or the confidence that if we have a number in this range, um, which is either plus or minus around that population mean, that we have a 91% um, confidence the interval that that, that number is contained 91% um, of the time around that mean. So how big of a sample size would we need to, to, to take so that we can statistically have this kind of confidence interval? So that's kind of what we're, we're being asked to find out here. Okay, so we know a couple of things from the question here. We know that the error, or the, the magnitude of the error is 3.2 units. So think of that as being the width of the, the, the interval itself that is centered around the population mean. So we're, we're essentially gonna be plus or minus half of that, that error distance. Okay, so that's, um, so that's the first thing. And then the other thing we need to know is what is the, the, the factor um, that we would, we're going, we used to calculate the error. So the, the, for, the, the key formula we need here is we need to know that Z alpha over two times sigma over root n is equal to basically our error bar. Okay, so we're going to be plus 3.2 units and minus 3.2 units based on that formula. So once we kind of understand what that is, okay, all we're really having to do here is solve for n. Okay, and we just need to figure out what some of our numbers are going to be. So the first thing is we know our standard deviation. It's been given to you. It's 17. Now we don't know the popular, we don't know the, um, the uh, sort of the mean of the values, but we don't really need it in this case because again, we're, we're estimating it around um, the population mean. So, and that, and that is going to be our, our, where it's centered at and we're just looking at the error. Um, so N is what we're going to have to find. What we do need to know is we need to know this Z alpha uh, by two. So we need to know our Z scores. So the confidence interval of 91% is going to help us determine that. So the first thing is we need to know is what is our alpha value? So our alpha value is the 100% of the curve, the statistical curve, but we're gonna take away, we're just interested in the 91% portion of it, which means there is going to be a 9% um, basically gap. This And the gap is what's, what you're gonna see on either end of the curve. Okay, so we, divide that by two, okay, so the alpha divided by two value, okay, is um, equal to the 9%, the split, in that, split that in half, which is 4.5%. Okay, so that means at the top end, we're gonna take off 4.5%, and at the bottom end, we're gonna take off 4.5%. So out of that, we just need to convert that to our Z scores. So simple to do is we we're, we just need to find one of our z scores um, so the the z alpha divided by two score here we have to calculate using our calculator so we can use the inverse norm function okay and we're going to just plug in the percentage that we're trying to find the z score for so again what we're going to do is we're going to do the z score for the 4.5 percent this would be the one at the lower end and we get a value of negative 1.69. So that's, that's our Z score to the left of it, which is really all that we need to, to find. But if, remember, there is another part of the Z score here, which is the upper bounds of it. So that would be equal to the inverse norm of not the 4.5%, but the 100% the minus 4.5, which would be 0.955 percent and then we actually end up just getting the positive version of that which is plus 1.69 okay so that's what we're we're essentially trying to find here is we've we've now marked off essentially the 
the curve. So if we had our normal distribution curve like this, okay, our z, we have our minus z alpha by two, we have our plus z alpha by two, we have our population mean in the middle, which is zero, okay, and this shaded area is the 91% um, interval. Okay, so that's essentially, that's how we're defining the problem. So in order, for, order for us to, to calculate the numbers with that degree of confidence, we're just looking to solve for, for n. So we plug in our, our equation here. So we, we have 3.2 is our error. We know our z alpha by, divided by two number. We can use either one of these. So we'll just use the first one, 1.69. We know our sigma is 17, and we're gonna divide that all by root n. Whoops. So now all we have to do is move, do a little bit of algebra, move the terms around to, and to solve for n. So um, I'm just gonna cross multiply this, so it's gonna be root n is equal to 1.69 times 17 divided by 3.2. And that is going to give us root n is equal to a value of, um, so we have negative uh, 1.69 times 17 divided by 3.2, which is going to give us to negative 8.978. And then in order to solve for n, we just square both terms. So the square will get rid of the negative sign and then n is just going to be equal to that answer squared, which is roughly 80.61. Okay, so therefore we would need, um, if we're counting numbers of things or people, we would need at least 81 people in the sample or um, whatever we're actually counting. Okay, and then it doesn't matter what z score we used, we could use the plus 1.69, it'll still be the same thing because we're still we're sort of squaring the term. So the value would be the same. So that's how you do a question like this where they give you the error in units or whatever they're counting um, centered around the population mean and we want a confidence interval at a, at a certain level. So this is how big the sample size would have to be picked. Okay, so all the, um, the other questions I believe in this segment they work the same way because they're always asking for the sample size. All you're doing is just changing in some of the numbers there. Okay, so that's how you would do that question.